that's it. So, started off in Brazil. Uh, that was okay. They said I needed uh, to have a hotel booked. I said I wouldn't be doing it. And they just put uh, a note on the system to say uh, the passenger refused, but they still let me on the flight. France were a bit more strict and they made me fill out a passenger locator form. And the guys, whenever you're doing these things, make sure you don't sign something away because you agree to an act. There's a difference between law and acts. As a human being, a human entity, we have to follow laws, especially in the UK. Do not uh, uh, disturb the peace, steal, do not steal, do not kill. Effectively, that's all we have to follow. We have all these different acts that come into play too. It is only when we agree to the acts of regulations that they mean something to us. So just the obvious one, the Road Sign Traffic Act. We sign that with our driving license, which means we agree to pay in fines when we speed. We agree to pay in fines when we're not wearing our seatbelt because we've, we've signed that documentation. But anything else, unless you've agreed to it, and there's ways that this whole system tricks us into it, it's the way that the police trick you into it, verbal agreements, that we need to know our rights. A great place to start is the documentary called Straw Man. It was made about 10 years ago. It explains all of this. It goes into debt, it goes into taxes, it goes into bailiffs, it goes into being pulled over and questioned by the police. And knowing where you stand as a human entity, a law-abiding citizen. So when I got back to the UK, I went to the gate, my passport didn't work. And then I realised that my suitcase automatically had gone to another terminal um, just because it flagged that I'd been to a red zone. So I knew I was going to have to have this com conversation with the immigration and border. And remember, I'm not slating anyone. People are doing their jobs, people are doing what they're told to. But I'm still standing to my truth. So I get to the, the desk, put my passport on. They said, have you booked a hotel? I said, I will not be uh, going to a hotel. Why not? I don't agree with it. And I just want to come back and see my family. The supervisor, you have to. I said, no, I don't. It's not the law. It is the law. It's a government law. And I was like, please, can you show me what law it is? It's, it's the COVID uh, regulations. I went, that's an act. I hadn't agreed to that act. Show me what law it's un un breaking. Show me what law it is. £5,000 fine you'd have to pay now. And the guy's filling this thing in. So again, guys, whenever people are telling you they're given, they don't have the right to do that with you. Unless you agreed into a contract with them, like business, corporations, and we're signing this because we've set up a business company, we now have to play uh, that game. But again, I didn't agree, so I knew this. I'm not paying it. So please go and show me the law that you said. He's, uh, I didn't got my camera out. This is another thing. You can't be recording me. I said, I can. It's a public space. Turn your phone off now and delete that off. I've got a family. I've got kids. I don't, I don't want this going on anywhere. I don't know where you're going to put it. And I said, Exactly. I've got family that I'm going to see. And at the moment, you're keeping me a prison, not letting me into my own country, which I'm lawfully allowed to uh, come back to. No one can stop you coming back into your own country. So he's got his uh, person uh, getting me a five grand thing. They're saying that I have to go to this two grand hotel. He's gone off now because I've asked him to go and get the police. And the police... By law, by the oath that they sign, the police are a public servant. They serve the people. So they got our best interests. So anything that's lawful, they're serving us. Anything that goes out of that, that's not their job. But the police trick you. And again, on the documentary straw man, if a police ever pulls you over, the first thing they ask is for your name and date of birth. All you have to reply is, am I obliged to answer that? And they have to say no. If they say yes, you do, they're going against their oath. They're lying. So the police are there for you. But the way the world works at the moment, the police are not. They're there to trick you. So I was really grateful. I've been looking into this stuff for a long, long time now. So in my head, I had an idea of what I was going to say. So before the police were coming... What I was expecting is for me to uh, ex uh, explain my rights and they would have let me through because this company are not allowing me to come through. I'm not agreeing to their terms. So the police really should be on my side. Let me into the country. So when I'm on the phone to this lady, um, I can pass on details after for anyone. 
Um, common law is so important to know and, and these are very hard to find us information online. She told me to, first of all, like a script, make sure you say these things. And it was brilliant. So uh, she said, please will come over. They're not going to be on your side. They're going to say, all this spill, stop them in the tracks. Excuse me, can you show me a warrant? She said, ask them three times. They're going to say no to start with. Then they might be a bit funny. By the third time, if they deny to show you a warrant, they're going against the Police Act of 1995, I believe. And that's a six month prison sentence for not identifying herself as a police officer after three times. So I've got my phone out recording them. Again, for protection, you're allowed to do this. And I said, can you show me a warrant? No. Can you show me your warrant, please? No, we're not doing that. Can you please show me a warrant? And they was like, I don't need to show you a warrant. Here's my number here. I said, okay, I just want to let you know, I've asked you three times. That is a six month prison sentence. They got a bit funny then, but they're looking at each other like, who's this mug? The next one, are you guys acting under oath? Every police officer has to say yes. Okay, this is where it all got really exciting. So she had told me all this and it was happening as I was saying it. The next one then, if they're under oath, I'm just going to read to you the Criminal Act of 2015 to let you know of Section 26, Subsection 3. And I said, do you want me to read it to you? Any constable that goes against it, and I've got it here. So any constable that goes against this act, if he or she uh, excuses her powers and privileges improperly, and if they know that they're doing it, that's a 16 year prison sentence. So I'm reading it to them like this, calm, and they must have been like raging inside. You can see they're getting angry. They said, you're going to the hotel, whether you like it or not. And if not, we're gonna take you down the cell. I said, okay, take me down the cell. So they get really funny, they stick me in handcuffs. Um, I asked politely, can I get my suitcase? They got all that, I was in the van, taken to the police station. They said, you're gonna to go to, you've now got another fine from the police, you're gonna spiral out, this is not gonna be good for you at all. And they're telling me, you're gonna still have to go to the hotel, there's no getting out of it. And I'm saying, that's not lawful. You're arresting me unlawfully here. And I, I was sending these videos at the time before they put the cuffs on me to my lawyer as well, just to back things up. So friendly, good conversations with some of the other police officers, get to the police station. The sergeant lady comes out as well and she's telling me the same thing. You're still gonna have to go. We're gonna keep you in here. And if you don't agree, you're gonna go prison. And I'm like, prison? And guys, you can't go prison without a judge. And if I'm acting lawfully and they've arrested me unlawfully, guess who's winning? And this is the thing is that they scare you so much. Normally they said, at the airport, we arrest you, we drag you through, and by then you just say, okay, I'm going to go to the hotel. That hotel is 10 days in refinement. Literally, you are like a prisoner. You have to walk around, I went there a bit later on that day actually, walk around the car park, the security everywhere. You're not allowed to leave your room uh, unless it's for like an hour a day. And if we come from a red zone country, I'm talking to all the police officers, I'm talking to all the immigration, I'm with them. Why aren't they going to the, the hotels like if it was really that much of a, it's money making these hotels are full up so the lady's now giving me this spiel as well says so you've got a choice you want to go to the hotel and i said no i'd rather go in the cell please and i could see that they were a bit confused and i said okay so i went to the cell i was in there for about four hours there's people fucking bad let me out all criminals are in there i'm just meditating chilling it and they gave me a bit of paper on the paper, it said all my rights of being in there. And the first thing it said, uh, they can keep you in here for 24 hours. After that, unless it gets extended to 36 by the judge, they have to let you out. So I had this all here. The, they gave me my call. So I, I called um, the solicitor, the lawyer advising me and couldn't get hold of her. So I'm still waiting in. I'm getting frustrated that I'm sitting in this cell. It's horrible. Like if you've been in a prison cell before, there's not much in there. There's a toilet in the wall. There's a bit we can wash your hands. Horrible little padded seat and loads of tiles. That's that's pretty much it. I've, I've had that experience before. 
So I was used to it, but I've just thought I'd just chill out in here. Um, I've done, I've, I've done what I've needed to so far and I'm sticking to this. Then the police officer puts his head in the door. You're going to this, um, hotel, whether you like it or not. I said, no, I'm going to stay in here for 24 hours. No, you can't. We're going to be taking you. I said, no, I'm, I'm going to stay here. It says it here that unless I see like a child, I'm staying here. And I looked at him and what they're doing, they're trying, they know that they shouldn't arrest me. There's nothing to arrest me because I went against an act, which I've always said that I haven't agreed to or believe in. I didn't get my opportunity to even share my part of the story because they won't allow you to. So I could see he was getting frustrated. And I looked at him, I went, you've arrested me against your oath. That's 16 years prison for you. When it's common law, it's not you're suing the police, you're coming, the individual, you're um, going against the individual. And he automatically, without him thinking, went, I didn't arrest you, it was the other person. As soon as he said that, I knew that they were a bit stressed. So I got a bit more frustrated. I said, look, I need to speak to my solicitor now. And they arranged one for me, which I said, no, no, I want to speak to my woman. And I spoke to her. Uh, she said, OK, put me on the phone to the detention officer. These two people had gone hiding. So there was this young lad I felt sorry for. And she absolutely ridiculed him, ridiculed him. And you could see he was like, oh, trying to uh, find the other two. They weren't coming out. She also stated that I'm going to be getting compensation for every hour that I'm in here, that for her client that's in here, we're going to be charging back because I've been uh, unlawfully arrested. And I also explained to her that he was said he was going to drag me to the hotel. That's harassment. And all these things will add up for you. Again, sticking up for your rights. So they were frustrated by this point and you could see he was getting really sketchy. He's like, what did she say? And I said, I said, you're in trouble. Your friend's in trouble. Harassment. I'm going to charge you. You've unlawfully arrested me. And I'm respecting. I've had good conversations with these people throughout this whole process. But again, they went against my wishes, stuck me back in the cell. And by the end of it, the, the sergeant came out and said, right, we're letting you go without charge. But we're entitled to drop you to the hotel. And then again, the police, this is against oath. They're coming up to me trying to say, look, you need to do this and you need to do that. And we're going to drop you there and you have to stay there. And if you don't, it's going to be a 10 grand fine and we're going to come after you again. And what they were hoping was by the time I get to that, I would have agreed to stay there. As soon as I got there, I got into the hotel, they gave my passport over. They went, I said, I'm not saying anything. And the hotel manager was like, you fucking got a sign and just started shouting at me. I was like, excuse me, who are you? I remember they're a hotel. They have no right on you at all. They're none whatsoever. There's no entitlement here. It's just a job title and I should be a customer. That's it. I'm not saying anything. I got my lawyer back on again. I'm getting angry at this point because I hadn't, I wasn't expecting someone to talk to me like that. There was all security guards around. And my lawyer told me, grab your bags and walk. She had me, I had her on loudspeaker. And she said, if anyone touches you, that's assault. Let them know that they need to let you go. And they had my poor passport, which I forgot about. So I needed to get that back. That was theft that they held onto it. This manager was going mental. So I kept walking. Security guard said, sir, you're not allowed to leave. Sir, you're not allowed to leave. And remember, if you signed agreement for this hotel, this is why they're so forceful. You've agreed to stay in this prison for 10 days. They're allowed to hold you to it. The police are allowed to come. I'm going to get the police again. Get the police. I've already been let go because they had nothing to do with it. And they dropped me off here for you. Get the police. In the end, I walked off. Um, the manager tried chase me for a while. I got in a taxi. And now I've come to where I need to go next and enjoy my time in the UK. So a bit of an ordeal, and if you weigh up the thing, like most people be a bit scared to go into the prison cell, but if you know what you're doing is right and you know your rights and you know what you stand for and you can argue with it, stick to it. Most people get their power over. The lawyer even said that most people, when the police come in, they'll go, oh, okay, I'll take the, uh, the hotel. I weighed it up. A few hours, 24 max, I was thinking, in the cell, which I didn't want to be at all. It's not what I want to be there. But 24 hours in there and they have to let me go. Or 10 days in a hotel spending £2,000. I'm not doing that. that. That was the easy way up. They had never had anyone go to that side to be in the cell. Normally they stop by that point. 
Regulations are still new too. Like I said, the regulations, not law, but they don't know what's going on either. And they don't know the, the different things that can happen. So they're constantly trying to find out questions as well. But the key part, they have no rights. They just try to scare you so much. So you sign into this hotel that then it's out of their hands. They were just doing what they need to. And then uh, we uh, complied. So I'm, I'm now uh, in the UK. I'm not isolated. I'm not in quarantine and I'm going to enjoy my life here. The, I'm going to be going after a lot of uh, the people that affected my day. I'm going to be claiming back all the money and the money that I, uh, the time that I lost within that period. But I'm also going to be sharing this a lot more uh, now and sharing these stories about common law. And there's some incredible people that I can introduce you to, to for anyone that does have that. But just that first bit, knowing your rights, you, you say it calmly, you say it kindly because that is your rights. And by law and by the oath that they sign, they have to agree to it. So anyone trying to enforce certain things on you, they're going to do it out of fear more than anything else. And they're going to keep doing it. They're going to try, they, they're going to try to catch you the words. They're going to try and get you to answer to certain things. So be present, pay attention. And then you'll start seeing if we all start doing this and we more all become aware of what we're entitled to as a human being. And we all start acting with love. Because if you do steal and you do kill and you do commit crime, you get arrested and de deservedly so. No one has to do anything. There's, you can't be forced to do something. If it's a company that you agreed to and they're forcing you and you don't want to do it, you can find somewhere else. That's still yours. You can't blame anyone else for making you do things. But a lot of us don't know. So my aim is not to be on here and being a rebel. My aim is just to share, especially when it comes to policing, because when they go against their oath, which they signed for, for the right reasons in the first place, to try to trick you and scare you into doing something that's a government regulation, legislation, an act, anything that's an act, it's called law of the sea. It's when we're not on land anymore, they brought it all back and we get confused. And they speak a language called legalese with all these words that actually, if you looked at the real definition of them, don't mean it. Mandatory being one of them. So, yeah, please reach out and I hope you enjoyed the story. I feel much better now. A bit stressed yesterday, a very eventful day. But I'm glad I stuck up for my rights and now I'm a free man.